right, so for 30 plus years, because I can't remember the exact date. Oh. Oh, 30 plus years, I made this cardboard vacuum cleaner, and before I dismantle it, uh, we'll give it one more blast, because I'm going to be dismantle it. I want to get the motor out, you see. So, I did some videos on it earlier, so you can go and check the videos, but it's got a lot of output pressure on it. Um, uh, let's see, put that in front of the thing, no, let's turn it on, let's watch what happens, before. this is before I dismantle it. Yeah, I want the motor out of it. Anyway, we did test before, I recorded it where it blew the bag up and everything, and but it's going to be a damn sight better when I get the 3D printed version. And that's one of my um, new rotors I've done. I didn't need to dismantle it to know how to build it. But I just want the motor out, you see. So, because the motors, um, it'll be more efficient when it's inside this 3D printed one. Um, so where do we start? Well, we start at the motor end. So, because it's all you stuck together with sellotape, it's not going to be a big job. So, it's simple really. I'll just get my knife. And... Start... Cutting it apart. I mean, it's, it is literally like opening a Christmas present, I suppose, really. Only it's a Christmas present I made for myself. <laughs> right. There we go. That ends off. Now it, the motor's attached. So, check this out. The, um, I'll have to take this. I'll have to, oh, I glued it in. Actually, I glued the motor in there. So, yeah, it's going to be. I'm going to have to use a bit of um, isopropyl alcohol, I suppose, to melt that glue because I glued it in. I hope, it, well, 30 years ago the glue was. I'm not going to use acetone, it'll melt the motor. So I'm hoping that I can just. Ooh, sorry, this is not on camera very easy. I'm just hoping that this will melt it sufficiently. Oh, my wire came off. Oh, well, let's take the other one off while we're at it, because the wires are only going to get in the way. Can I get it a little loosening it off? It looks like the motor's coming out, actually. It's actually, the end's coming off anyway. It is literally just cardboard. Uh, it's a nice motor. I even forgot what it looks like. I forgot what it looks like. Let's ease this off a bit with my knife, actually, this glue. Um, I'm trying to keep the camera on it. It was an expensive, it was quite expensive actually when it was new, but modern technology, I'm pretty sure that modern motors these days are even more efficient. They will be more efficient. I kind of feel a bit sad that I'm taking it apart because I will no longer have the novelty of the cardboard vacuum cleaner. But at least I've got a YouTube video on it, I suppose. Uh, it's amazing how cardboard can, how the glue can be so rock hard. Ooh, after 30 years. Ah, come on. That's coming. Come in, come in. I think, I think it'll come off now. Yeah, here we go. I can get the motor now. There we go, there's the motor. And what is it? It's an ATM racing motor. 
There's the cornflake box inside. With all the writing on. Oh, I can have a good read now. Oh my god, look at the fashions. <laughs> oh my god, there's Dustin Hoffman in there. Oh, it's Dustin Hoffman. Ah. In the yellow thingy. Uh, I'm watching a delay on the camera. It must have been a movie he was making. Right, so there is the motor. Right, I hope you can read that. Uh, basically, the label's intact. It says a King Motor, oh, a King Motor Co Limited. Yeah, I've forgotten what it looked like. It's been a long time it's been in there. The coils on it are massive. It'll still turn even without the... Um, actually, let's turn it on. Let's, let's try and power it up again while it's um, like this. And because I can just hold the back end, there's, there's the hole where the air came through. Actually, that hole's a bit small, I shouldn't really be bigger than that. <laughs> no wonder the airflow was a bit restricted. Um, I'll use my little battery. Um, I just want to, I want you to move it while it's running, because I want you to see it speeds up because there's friction before I take the rest of it apart. Um, They just, before I dismantle all of it, actually I've forgotten which is positive now. Well, that's positive. Right, so that will be that one. Because uh, I couldn't pull it before, it was too flat, you know. This is the other battery, so it will run a bit slower. Now, what I'm curious about is, because it, it was rubbing, you see, and now, let's just, I need to turn it this way around so I can get my hand. It's catching somewhere. Oh, it won't start on this battery. This battery must be flat. Ah, that's weird. This battery must be a bit flat. I'll put the other one back on. I'll use the first battery I was using before. Um, I'm going to dismantle the rest of it. Don't worry. We'll get there. Um, positive is that one. What is wrong with these wires? I don't get it. It was working a minute ago. Ah. Right, it's what it is catching somewhere. I'll take it. Ah, oh, this way is warm. Yeah, it's catching too much. Now I've just started to dismantle it. It's rubbing like crazy. Ah, oh, this is why I need to use the 3D printed version. Now, right. So how do I get? How are we going to get the rest of this apart? Right. Well, it looks like. It's going to be the case of the way I assemble it. Now, if I remember rightly, I just wrapped these things around there. So what I'm going to have to do is an autopsy on it. Oh, that's going to be fun. What's the best way to do an autopsy? Well, I'll just have to carry on with a knife. And... If I start on sellotaping it, it's just going to pull everything apart. All the paper's just going to rip. 
Oh, there we go, that's that one done. I thought I recorded for posterity. Yeah. Yeah, when it the YouTube went wrong and it didn't get recorded, but well, no big deal. Where's my scissors gone? I need my scissors. I don't know where I put them. Oh, there they are. <sighs> right under my nose end. So I find the seam. Where's the seam? There's the seam. There's always a seam with conflict packets. So if you didn't doubt if you did if you didn't if you had doubts that this was cardboard there you go. <laughs> and there's the shaft look in between. And I even used a, a screw Alan, let's get the, let's get my, I think it's a Torx, no, is it a Torx or it's an Allen key, I can't remember now, it's so long. I actually soldered this onto a, some, oh, that's what I used, I couldn't remember what I used. I actually used a whole bunch of standoffs in series with each other. I used a whole bunch of standoffs, you know, that I used for circuit board standoffs to make the drive shaft <laughs> that's what I used oh well um, I need an allen key it's actually a bit rusty is that Actually, I think there's an Allen key in my, um, my soldering iron box. It might fit. I'll have to try it. My soldering iron kit thing has a Allen key in here. And it might be the right one. I'll have to look because I can't, think, can't find my others at the moment. Let's have a look. Will it fit? Um, We're in luck, I think. We are in luck. Oh god, it's tight. Well, 30 years of, of not moving, I suppose it'll be rusted on. Ah, got you.
So, strictly speaking, it's not all cardboard, there's a bit of metal and brass in it. God, it's still stuck on there. I've loosened the Allen key and it still won't come off. <laughs> wow. Let's just try a bit of WD-40 on it. It, it is really stuck on there. I'll put my soldering kit away. I get my pliers on this I could heat it I suppose if I put the pliers between the motor and the, the thing I should be able to prise it off I don't want to bend the drive shaft on the motor I certainly don't want to do that I think it moved there got it finally I think I must have glued that on as well so right, I've got the motor out, which is the main part, and uh, yeah, the hole was a bit small for the air suction. Uh, well, the new designs that I've done are going to be a damn sight better. So there's the motor. Uh, that's the first plate I made out of cardboard with a bit of resin, and it's flimsy. It's not very, it's not very solid at all, as you can see. So, how fast does this motor spin without a load on it? Because I can't remember. Let's stick the, the correct voltage on it, which is this. And I'm interested because I can't remember now. I'm pretty sure it's a high speed thing. Um, huh. Oh, I'll put the frigging wire now. The wire of it. I keep putting things down and forgetting where I put them. One lead's enough. All I have to do is connect um, that to the positive, this to the positive, and touch the end of the other end on the battery, and we'll see how fast it can go. Pretty fast. And it's not getting very warm now because it's there's no load on it at all. And it's not rubbing on anything, but it's a good motor. It uses a lot of power though. So we probably at some point need a more efficient motor. It's actually um, as far as I'm aware. I believe it's 7 volts or something. It's supposed to be, oh, it's 6 volts. It doesn't actually say. Oh, it says 5. AK523 
forward slash 5 so I assume it's 5 volt oh it says on here 22,000 rpm right so this is capable of going up to 22,000 rpm right that's what it says on the motor uh, let's see if we can get this on, get this on there um, it's that shiny stuff it's hard to see I don't even see that but it's in the it's in the uh, red writing that's between the blue and the large red so it's the red it's a small print um, yeah but it says 22,000 rpm that's its capability um, Anyway, I might as well carry on dismantling this thing because I'm pretty sure people are interested to see what's inside it. But that motor on the other end is just an empty shell. I only used it as a bearing at the time because it was the 80s. I mean, it wasn't cheap to buy. We didn't have eBay in the 1980s. So we couldn't just go around and buy a, a bearing. I mean, you went to a, a local ironmongers to buy a bearing. You, it right, cost you seven quid. You know, it's ridiculous prices back then. So, I just made do with what I had. And the fun part is, is it was when we get to the turbines that I actually designed in the 80s. I mean, I did, I had to make it everything fairly small because the cardboard isn't very strong. So, sorry about this, I'm knocking the microphone. Hmm. I had to make things quite small um, because the tolerances of cardboard as you know when it's flying around at high speed or it didn't actually fly around at 22,000 rpm like I was expecting because the there was a lot of drag it was catching everywhere and cardboard tends to move and creep and warp and um, yeah it was just it's very unstable Oh, right, there we go, it just comes off as if that's the cap. And that's my original drawing for the. Yeah. It's quite rigid because it's. Uh, I've painted it inside with fiberglass resin um, to rigidify it a bit. So there's two of my rotors. Well, there's the rotor that goes on the outside. And there's a state on the outside there, the one that doesn't move. As you can see, it's wobbling like crazy. And the thing that's stopping it from falling out, and the only thing that's holding it in place is really that motor on this end. And it's going to be fun to get the rest of it apart because I believe that there are nuts between each section so I've got to undo these nuts now. Or maybe we don't need to undo the rest of it because let's face it we only need to see two of the two of them the way I made them originally um, and that's what we're looking at. I mean, the, the rest of them are identical. Uh, basically, all we've got is the stator, and it goes to centre hole, um, which feeds the next set of stators. So there's one, two, three, four. There's four stators um, on this. Um, so yeah, there's not much point taking the rest of it apart. It's just you know, all I'm going to. Uh, the only thing I'm going to retrieve out of there is a lot of cardboard, and it's it's kind of pointless really. I might as well just leave it. It actually still blows, eh? Even I can feel it on through the hole there at the bottom. Air still coming out just by spinning it by hand. And there's actually a lot of drag on it. 
Well, it's not too bad, but. Hmm. So I got what I wanted really is this motor because um, this is the important part that I needed for the 3D model one because I want to do a comparison so that um, yeah surprisingly it's this motor stayed really clean mind you it's been in a sealed container so yeah nothing could get to it the coils are pretty hefty, I don't know if you can see in there, but um, got pretty big coils on it. Very duty thing. Hang on. Uh, let's see. Let me see inside the motor. Uh, you probably can. Uh, wrong way. Oh. Uh, I keep doing everything backwards. Um, right. Yeah. Uh, be out of focus anyway. It, lo it looks like um, it looks like 18 F 18 SWG wire. It looks pretty hefty wire on there. The magnets have got a lot of cogging. It's got a lot of cogging on it. That's probably another thing that's... The, shaft, the shaft on it, the dry shaft, has gone a bit rusty. A bit of moisture has obviously got into it. You know, I'm thinking, I think this must be an Akai. Because it says AKM. Maybe a Akai was the AKM. I don't know. No, it just says Air King Motor Co Limited, so I'm not sure who made it. They're probably gone out of business. I have no idea where I got it from. I don't know if I bought it. I probably did actually. I probably did buy it. Probably bought it from a model shop. I can't remember now. So, right, what else is there to do really? It's not a lot, I mean, there's no point in taking the rest of it back because all the other stages are exactly the same as the first stage. Um, and to be honest with you, I'm not sure if I think I, oh, I think I, this would unscrew. Probably would unscrew this. If I can just unscrew the top one. Ah, God, that's tight. Ah, toss it, it's come undone. Right, okay. Alright then, since it's come undone without a lot of force, let's take the top end off. Ah. Well, I, will I be able to undo this without everything just spinning around and around and around on me? I think I've set it in place with resin. Yep, yeah, I did. I actually put some resin in there to stop it from turning, so I don't think I'm going to have much... I don't think I'm going to be able to... Oh. I have a feeling it's just going to go around and around and on me. Let's look through this window to see. Oh, I think it is, yeah. 
Yeah, the other rotors underneath are going around. I'm going to turn this nut so we're not going to get it off without basically dismantle this end as well. So it's not going to be a simple task to actually get it off. So I say leave it, just leave it, because no, I don't need to take it apart. If it had come apart easily, then yeah, I would have done, but it's still something worth looking at, you know, to show people or as a reference point. Uh, once I destroyed it, it's gone forever, so. Now I've put it back, it's cockeyed now, look. Yeah, because I'd have to put pliers on the on the shaft on the other end. I have to destroy this end, take this end off, and grab a hold of it. And why right, bother? I'll just um, stick this back on here for now, like this. I've still got a partial cardboard vacuum cleaner. <laughs> yeah. <coughs> But there's not much else to see in there, really. I do have to take this uh, motor off here. Um, off this face plate thing. Um, screwdriver. Oh, my knees are cramped up today. I'm going to be making it. Actually, I can use this piece of cardboard <coughs> as my template. I uh, I can scan it and then draw around it and get my holes the right positions and everything to make the uh, 3D printed one if I want. There we go. Got that off. That's the motor. Actually, I need the washers as well. They're kind of stuck on there. They're stuck to the resin. Got ya. I'm pretty sure these screws came with the motor, so... Yeah, there's the template part. I can use that bit. Just to... Because the motor does require cooling, so... Oh, that's probably why I made the hole quite small because I wanted air to go through the motor to cool the motor yeah that, that would that makes sense so I remember now I thought I was thinking to myself well this motor needs cooling so and there's a hole in the motor there and there's holes there so it would make sense to allow ventilation to blow through it to keep it cool because these things do get bloody hot really hot Mind you, if it's working in an efficient in an efficient environment without any drag and it's got good bearings on it, I'm hoping that I'll get it should go a lot faster and it shouldn't get over, it shouldn't overheat. It weighs a lot. This motor is blooming heavy. Ah. Let's see how heavy this motor is. is it? Right. This motor weighs 154 grams. Yep, yeah, 154 grams, that's how heavy that is. Yep, 
including screws. back end here I just thought, I think my sister was still alive when I made this. She, well, she passed away in eight, around 85. I don't know, I, wouldn't have made, I can't remember exactly when I made it, but it was in the 80s. That looks a bit better. Doesn't have all that crud around the and I'm glad it hasn't gone rusty because the, the drive shaft was just starting to go rusty Let me paper, let's just clean that up a bit. There's a flat one cleaning. That's better. Oops. Okay, I think that's it for now. I'm still printing stuff, 3D printing stuff, and it's going to take forever.